Audiobook Academy Biography Presents. Anthony Fauci. Dr. Anthony Fauci has been in charge of the NIH's Allergy and Infectious Diseases Directorate since that year. During the new coronavirus pandemic, he has emerged as a significant leader. When Dr. Anthony Fauci joined the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases, NIAID, in 1968, he had just graduated from Cornell Medical College. His revolutionary work on HIV-AIDS research, which resulted in the development of potent medications that reduced the disease's once outsized mortality rate, made him a household name once he took over as NIAID head in 1984. Prior to the 2020 coronavirus pandemic, Fauci served as the U.S. Director of the CDC's National Center for Immunization and Respiratory Diseases, NSERD. Childhood and Education He was born on December 24, 1940 in Brooklyn, the second child of Eugenia and Stephen Fauci first-generation Italian-Americans. When he wasn't working at his father's pharmacy or playing baseball, basketball, or football, he was a sports fanatic. Fauci graduated from Manhattan's Regis High School, where he captained the basketball team as a senior, and then went to Worcester, Massachusetts College of the Holy Cross to pursue pre-medical studies. His internship and residency were at New York Hospital Cornell Medical Center, where he graduated first in his class in 1966. Director of the NIAID it was only while serving as head resident at the New York Hospital Cornell Medical Center in 1970 and 1971 that Fauci's long career at the National Institutes of Health's National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases began. He was a senior investigator in the Laboratory of Clinical Investigation, where he established successful drug regimens for previously fatal conditions such as polyarteritis nodosa, granulomatosis with polyangiitis, and lymphomatoid granulomatosis. As a result of his achievements, Fauci rose to the position of director of the National Institutes of Health's National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases under President Ronald Reagan in 1984. The study of HIV-AIDS. He had to convince both the administration and activists that he wasn't to blame for the perceived government delay in dealing with HIV-AIDS in the homosexual community when he took over as director of the NIAID. Anti-AIDS activist groups were able to form partnerships with Fauci by having access to experimental treatments while they were still in clinical testing. Furthermore, he discovered how HIV affects our immune system, which aided in the development of new treatments that allow HIV-positive people to have full and active lives. The President's Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief, launched by George W. Bush in 2003 and focused on fighting the disease in Africa and other developing countries, was developed with Fauci's assistance, even after he nominally relinquished leadership in 1994 with the establishment of the Office of AIDS Research, Ebola, West Nile virus, and other infectious diseases. The public health concerns that have distinguished subsequent administrations, such as the West Nile virus under President Bill Clinton, the anthrax scare and SARS outbreak under President Bush, and the swine flu pandemic under President Barack Obama, have all brought Fauci back to prominence. It was also during this time that he displayed an empathetic human touch, hugging an American nurse who had recovered from Ebola prior to going into Liberia for large-scale clinical vaccine testing. President Trump, the CDC, and coronavirus. The new coronavirus was first reported in China in January 2020, and Fauci swiftly established a team to begin developing a vaccine. He and his colleagues at the Centers for Disease Control began preparing the American public for what was eventually recognized as a massive global epidemic within a matter of weeks as COVID-19 spread to other countries. When President Trump made two optimistic statements, Fauci was there to counter or tone them down, making him a regular at news briefings. Fauci rejected Trump's claim that hydroxychloroquine, an anti-malaria medicine, could be a game-changer in mid-March is anecdotal. Fauci was one of the influential voices who persuaded the president to abandon the Easter reopening timetable, which he had previously predicted. Because of his measured but unflinching evaluations, the doctor became famous during the historic government shutdown, albeit he received death threats from those who believed he was undermining the president's authority. To add insult to injury, when State Department Secretary Mike Pompeo claimed that the virus had its origins in a Chinese lab, he disagreed with Pompeo. Reopening the country too rapidly, Fauci cautioned in a May remote hearing before the Senate Committee on Health, Education, Labor, and Pensions. Suffering and mortality that could be averted. At least one heated debate took place with Kentucky Senator Rand Paul, who remarked that others were also equipped to make decisions about whether or not children should be let back in schools. We don't know everything about this virus, Fauci said. I have never made myself out to be the end-all and only voice in this, he added and we need to be especially vigilant when it comes to youngsters, especially. Honors and Recognition Fauci has been awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom, 
the National Medal of Science, and the Mary Woodard Lasker Award for Public Service, among many other honors. In 2019, he was honored into the Government Hall of Fame as a member of the inaugural class. Fauci is a member of the National Academy of Sciences, the National Academy of Medicine, the American Academy of Arts and Sciences, and the American Philosophical Society. He has received 45 honorary doctorates from universities all around the world. Christine Grady with the rest of the family. His wife's future husband needed Fauci's help translating for a Portuguese-speaking patient, and she happened to be working as an intern at the NIH where Christine Grady, who is now the department's chief, was working. It was 1985 that they got married, and they've had three children, Jennifer, Megan, and Allison. Personal Passions While Fauci, who lives in Washington, D.C., is known for his 16-hour workdays and seven-mile lunchtime runs, he admits to reducing the latter to roughly three and a half miles when the coronavirus outbreak struck. The doctor spends his spare time fishing, playing tennis, and cooking and creating art. Thank you for listening in Audiobook Academy. Don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button for more content like this, see you in next video.